Well, Mark, here we are again. Yeah. Another question and answer. Let's get straight into it. Now the Cheltenham game has been postponed, when are the club planning their annual remembrance fixture for? Quite an apt question. It's a very apt question. Um, and as you know, we had been planning to have that event on the Cheltenham game, which was the 17th, as near to the 11th as we could get it. Um, obviously, a lot of that was, you know, we was hoping that there was a, a backfall situation that should Cheltenham have the, the international call-ups, we would then drop it back into the FA Cup. Um, weekend, but again, we was drawn away in the FA Cup against Maidenhead, which scupper that plan. Um, and due to a quirk of, of the fixtures, the two games leading up to the Remembrance Sunday, uh, again, were, were away fixtures. So that, that hasn't done us any favours there. Now, we looked at it. The options were obviously the Checker Trade game. The, the two games we've got in November, the, the Checker Trade game, which falls two days, I believe, two days after Remembrance Sunday, or wait till the end of the month for the Walsall game, which is again on a Tuesday night at home. Um, and 27th. the 27th, which was everyone we spoke to um, associated with it, said that is just far too long. So we consulted with the Royal British Legion, we've consulted with Pompey Pals, and we've de decided to have it on the Checker Trade game on the Tuesday night against Tottenham under 21s. Now, I know that isn't going to go down well with some people. I fully appreciate and understand that. But this isn't about, with the greatest respect to Portsmouth Football Club, this is about remembering those that gave the ultimate sacrifice um, in a special way. And the only way we felt we could do that was to have it as near as we could to the actual date. Plans are in place. We're going to be having troops. Um, Ex-servicemen are going to be invited in totally for free give as many tickets as required there. And Portsmouth Football Club on the day will be organising, in association with the Royal British Legion, um, a collection bucket. So again, we can raise more money there for the Royal British Legion. And additionally, we're going to be given 50% of all net profits on that day made from the game by Portsmouth Football Club back to the Royal British Legion. So we feel we're doing all that we can. It was, we was never going to please everyone with that decision. And I fully appreciate and get that. Um, but we did feel that this was the, the most apt way to commemorate, you know, um, the passing of the 100-year armistice since the end of the First World War. And it has to be stressed, planning for this has been going on for a year, but you could never foresee this set of circumstances. We couldn't have foreseen the set of circumstances where we won. We had the two games leading up were both away games. Um, and then the following game was... The FA Cup, which would have been the ideal, was going to be drawn away. And then the game following that, which was a home game, was going to be cancelled due to international call-ups by Charlton. So it was just, and then, it, as I say, it kicks it back then until the end of November, which puts us in a really difficult position. Because when you speak to people not associated with football, who don't really get the politics of the Checker Trade Trophy, this is purely about remembering those that gave the ultimate sacrifice, you know, for their country, throughout, you know, the, the, well, throughout history, really. It's, it's about remembering those that have given that ultimate sacrifice. And, and we felt that was the best way to mark that. And that was in cons consultation with the Royal British Legion and with um, Pompey Pals. On the same flavour, any chance of more poppy pins? 1,000 was never going to be nearly enough to satisfy the demand. And an increased number could have resulted in more money going to the charity. Again, I think it's important I make it clear that this wasn't a club-led um, sow. This was the Royal British Legion who asked for our permission to license the, the club crest, which obviously we gave them such a great cause. Um, they produced a thousand themselves. We, di we didn't produce them. They sent us the thousand, stressed they were limited edition, asked us to sell them on their behalf, which we've done, and the money will be given to them. We've, we've had no real, we haven't produced them, you know, we, we're not taking any profit, we're not getting involved in any of that. We are simply selling them on behalf of the Royal British Legion. Brilliant. On to matters on the pitch. Why did the club not broadcast the Wimbledon game at Fratton Park? Um, the last one we broadcast, um, I can't remember when it was now, we did the bean back, because as, as everyone probably knows, in the event of a sellout, you can do a bean back. Um, it is very costly. You have to pay a license fee. You have to have um, someone from the EFL, one of their engineers, the, the company that 
that does the production has to be on hand, so we have to pay them a day rate as well. And the last one that we did um, at Fratton Park in the Victory Lounge was very, very poorly attended. Mm. And now with this one being available for people to watch it at home on iFollow, yeah. we just took the decision why, why go to all that expense when people can just watch it themselves anyway and in the comfort of their own home. Okay. And it's put a whole new perspective on beanbag games, hasn't it, it iFollow? Has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has changed it. But again, if, if it's a non-quality, so it's not, it's, if it's an international break weekend and it can be streamed, then I don't think there's such a rationale to put it on and go through all that expense at the Victory Bar. However, if it's a non-international break weekend and there's a sellout, that opportunity does exist and it's something that we will do again in the future, if required. Yeah. Swiftly moving on to other yeah. things, what are the plans for the Academy, given that Head of Academy Performance and Recruitment, Dave Wright, is leaving? Has a suitable replacement been sourced? Um, I won't talk about David specifically um, in this because it's not fair. He's, he's, he's still at the club. Um, still contracted with us at this moment in time. Um, plans for the Academy generally is to continue with the investment that we are currently putting in. Um, there is no immediate plans to up our category from category three to category two. Um, as people do leave, um, especially potentially lead to clubs, you know, in the premiership or the championship, you know, I think that is a testament to us in, in how well we are doing as a football club. Um, but life goes on. Um, it happens with players, happens with managers, happens with CEOs, happens with everyone at football clubs. People leave and that's an opportunity to get to get someone else in, you know, hopefully and go through that process again um, in getting recruiting well, recruiting the right person and recruiting people that along with the rest of the team can take us to the next level. Follow on from that, are we, are we aiming to push the academy to the next category and improve facilities? Or are we likely to see development in other areas of the club, i.e. first team, Pompey women, Pompey in the community, stadium first? <laughs> well, that's a great question because there's, it, it shows the responsibility that, that the club have got of a whole with all the different entities and entities that we are doing our best individually to try and help and assist and bring under, more under the, the, the umbrella of Portsmouth Football Club. As you, you know, with Pompey women, um, as you know, we have brought that under. It's still a technically a separate entity, but we, we're taking the responsibilities for, for that and undertaking that we will continue with Pompey women. Um, the academy is a very pertinent question. I think the rule changes of EPPP have proven that there's very little advantage to step up from a Category 3 to a Category 2 academy. There's just a lot more expense for very little reward. I think part of our strategy will be, as we've seen this year in the paying of two transfer fees for um, lads in the under 18 age group, will be a growing emphasis on concentrating on, on that particular age group. So we'll offer the platform for all the, the Pompey um, lads and women, um, you know, from very young ages at category three level. We'll nurture them through as we have got a history of doing it, I'd like to add. And then, but by the time we get to the 16, 18 age group, that's where we're gonna be putting extra resource in developing at that age. And then as we hopefully, you know, progress on the pitch in the first team, and we've talked about, a, a, you know, a potential um, development squad moving forward in the future, and, you know, I think that then blends in well with that more mid to long-term strategy. But nothing's been totally, um, decided on that other than there is going to be a greater emphasis on on that 16 to 18 age group in regards of recruitment and making our youth team the under 18s the strongest that we possibly can and that just because we are a category three doesn't mean we can't be category two and category one teams but I think that 16 to 18 age group is key in regards of recruitment and getting in the right players and that might not necessarily be players from Portsmouth. As I say, we want to keep the underbelly there of the academy to feed through with that. Of course, we'd love if they were all, or majority were from Portsmouth, but at that age group, we have to start if needed, and we have done that this year, buying in a bit of quality to make the whole team better. Another part of that question 
is in regards of um, the facilities. Whether we're category three, category two, category one, we are and will continue to push for the best facilities that, that we can you know, reasonably afford to keep, again, as part of that development, not just for the academy, but for the first team as well. And we are, there is a number of things we are currently looking at in that regards. That's a very comprehensive answer to a comprehensive question. Yeah, it's a very good question, by the way. <laughs> OK, on to social responsibility. Yeah. Bristol Rovers have committed to banning single-use plastics at their stadium. As a coastal city, it would be great if we could implement such a policy at Fratton Park and would live up to the club's social responsibility. Yes, it seems a no-brainer to me. I'm sure that there's people at the club already looking at that, especially in the C&B department where we do obviously spend a lot on, on things like straws, cups and, and whatever, you know, and plastic cups, and whatever. So um, following that it is something that I will personally start looking into because, you know, it is becoming a big hot topic and, and something that we should be at the forefront of. OK. On to strip. Why no red, not even a dash on the official club merchandise? Blue, white and red are our traditional colours. Yeah, that's, again, that's a great question because it's something that I've had personally a lot of emails sent over the last year and, and basically saying are we gradually trying to um, push red out of our colours. We are traditionally a, a red, white and blue um, club. Um, something that we hadn't consciously, genuinely tried to do. Just, just how things worked out with the kit designs. But as a result, not just of that question, but of many other inquiries I've had on it, we are looking that potentially next season there will be some red incorporated back into kit designs. Hasn't been agreed yet, I have to stress, but it is something that we are consciously looking to possibly um, you know, bring back into the kit. Yeah, and again, in the same flavour, has the change from Sondico to Nike had a significant impact on merchandise income? Yes. Yep. Yeah, significant, yeah. I can't say, I mean, that's, that's not, not any, that's just not a straightforward so answer to a straight question. Not yes. so comprehensively answered, but straightforward, straight enough. Forward, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any plans for either a half season ticket or half season pass on iFollow? Um, iFollow, we can't. Um, is there a season ticket there or is that just about iFollow, the question? Um, any plans for either a half season ticket? In yeah, the so yeah, two questions. EFL iFollow, we're governed by the Football League in, in whether they want to sell half season passes. I think it's a good idea in, in, in that regard. Um, something I'll raise the next time that, you know, I speak to someone at the Football League, is there any plans for it? But there's no plans that I am aware of in that regard. Um, We've selling over 14,000 season tickets. We get to Christmas, you know, potentially we're still in a very good position in the league. Do we then want to sell half season tickets for the rest of the year? My gut feeling is, and I haven't spoken to Tony Brown, obviously the COO, uh, Anna Mitchell, the commercial director, or even our board about this, but my gut instinct tells me no this year. You're not going to get a great seat, are you? One, you're not going to get a great seat. The potential is that if we carry on with this amazing run, we're going to be probably selling out on a match day anyway. You're freeing up match day. You know, obviously the match day revenue is far greater than, than half season ticket revenue. So why would you want to butcher that income? That's just my personal thought, but nothing's been finally agreed. But again, to answer that question, there are currently no plans. I can't sit here and say, yes, we are going to be doing a half season ticket. Mm -hmm. Any plans to introduce a match day programme subscription service? Um, Never heard that before, never been requested that, but I'm sure if there is, if someone would um, require that service and maybe want to pay the, in advance and, and to have them sent out, it's something we would do. I think it's happened years ago. Yeah. It's not something, I mean, it's not something we'd say no to. If a supporter rang us and said, can I pay for the programmes a year in advance and you send them out, I'll just have them put by for me, then it's something that we would do on an individual basis, even though we don't actually advertise it. Okay. So... How many months are we going to sit here and so, <laughs> with Pompey on top of the league? Yeah, uh, hopefully another six. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's great season so far. It's important, as we say, we take each game as it comes. Um, I think K Kenny's been great, you know, it, both in the press and, and with me privately, where I think we've got to be careful we don't get fixated about the other teams around us. I'm like everyone else, you know, I come running down into this ballroom at the end of a game and how did X team get on, how did Y team get on? So Can you not get I, it on your phone? 
I, don't know, I can't get a signal. No. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and so I come running down to see the results. I never go on my phone during the game. It's just, just not me. But I do genuinely come running down or, or ask people, how did X team get on, Y team get on? So I'm as guilty as any support in doing that. But I think if you, if you look over the years, Kenny's very much focused on what we're doing as a football club and our results and how we're playing and how we're performing. And I think that's what we have to do. As I say, if you go back historically um, into points required to get either into the playoffs or, or automatic promotion, as long as we are on that curve and, and within those boundaries, that then we'll get to where we want to be. But it is literally one game at a time. Um, we've, I think this, we're in a great position as a football club. I know I keep saying it, but sometimes we have to appreciate where we are. We are currently top of the league. We're debt free. We've got fantastic owners. Everyone's working so hard behind the scenes. I think we've got great staff. We've got great rapport with the fans. Things don't get a lot better than this in football. So let's just enjoy the ride. You know, as I say, one game at a time and, and let's see where it takes us at the end of the year. Stop there. We, we don't we'll stop there. No further than that. All right. Thank, Thank you, Johnny.